Hello and welcome back to the studio here in a very wintry Northumberland. And what I'm going to do today is watercolours. But it's a little picture that I took a couple of nights ago as I was walking down the track with the dogs. There's the dog. I won't have him, but there we go. He's a bit smudged as he was moving. Because believe it or not, that photo is amazing. Mobile phones these days, how much light they capture for a photograph, even when it's getting dark. And that was about 4.15, 4.20 in the evening. And of course it's winter, so it was practically dark. So, but what I'm gonna do is make that into a snow scene, um, because the snow is not far away. <laughs> so I'm gonna, that's my reference picture with me. And once I've got the drawing done, I don't really need that photograph anymore because I'm just gonna stick my own colors on. So start off with a quick outline drawing, here we go. And you notice I've only taped the top and the bottom of the piece of paper. That's because I'm going to get come across as far as I want, get the drawing done, and then tape the sides once I've finished with the drawing. A squiggly line. It's not a clear-cut tree trunk, this one. Squiggly line coming up. And we've got some stuff coming off here. And even though... This is a, going to be a snow scene, and so winter trees. I'm not filling them out with loads of twigs. Just stick to the main boughs, really. And we'll be having lots of twigs. But I should be doing them with the paintbrush. And a bit more of that down here. coming up here, the bow coming off there. Might take a bit of drawing this one, but at least you get to see it all. I hate these things where you see the painting started with the drawing already done, so you don't get to see the drawing. It's important to see the drawing. It's a very important bit of the painting. And some squiggly bits coming up there. And like I say, there'll be a lot more of these, a lot more twigs. But I should be just painting them. And I'll be having a lot of, not so much foliage, just rough stuff in a moment here. You'll see what I mean when I do it. And a few bits up here. Now at the bottom of that, I've got some hedgy bits. Hedgy bits, technical term now. Here. And this is one edge of the path, sorry, path. And that comes out a little bit there. And here in the far, far distance, that's a lot of woodland. This is a track that I go down quite often with the dogs in the evening. If I can't be bothered to drive to the beach, that is. <laughs> and here's a hedge on the other side of the track. And that comes out to about there. There's the base on the other side of the track there. base of that, that's where we're going to have snow at the bottom of the hedge. Going all the way out there. And here now I've got another tree. My 
big bow coming off those. Well, at that side, left hand side of that tree. Twigs coming off that. Again, bit of rough stuff on the side there. And up. How's that looking good? Looking good. Yep. Okay. Time to make a mistake, yep. Yeah. Actually, something like this, you can't really make a mistake. Because no one knows where it's supposed to be. So it can be anything you want. And a few bits coming out here. And there's some more distant trees. And coming out there, slightly bigger, because they're a little bit nearer than those. And there, that's my drawing. Mora, actually, I'm speaking too early. I've got some scrubby stuff here. Scrubby stuff, another technical term for it. And some bits coming out of those. And there, that's my drawing done. Now what I'm gonna do is tape off either side. Okay, now what I've done is just tape off either side of the drawing so you can see the completed thing, really. Um, so it's time for the sky wash. A common thing to do when you're doing your sky wash is to paint around everything. Now, you can imagine with all these twigs and stuff, if I've got, if I'm taking the time to paint around all these bits and pieces with the sky, by the time I've finished, by the time I'm halfway through the sky, it'll be dry. So I'll be making a mess of the sky. So don't think about them, just paint through them. If you need any lighter areas, suck out with a, with a brush, suck out the paint once it's dried. And then you can still have your lighter areas as well. I'll show you what I mean anyway. Plenty of water. And it's a very simple sky on this one. I'm not gonna fiddle about at all, but I don't want it too bright loads of water. I don't want it too bright blue that one. It's not a summery sky. And that's in there. Now what I'm using for a change is cobalt blue in my very clean palette. Cobalt blue there. Pop that on and bring it down. Now into the cobalt blue a strange one, this one, and put in some sand, Charles M. Sand. So, pulls it down a little bit now. Wash out, squeeze out, mop up. And again, mop up. All I'm doing is squeezing the brush out, mop it up. Now this is what I'm talking about. If I wanted some lighter bits, like in the trees or stuff, I'm going to my three quarter inch wash brush. And you can do this even when it's dry. You can suck out again. Just take your paint out. Isn't that easy? Mop up again there. You can see it's sopping wet this. I'm not messing about with clouds in the sky, by the way. That's just the blue and that's it. Again, sharpen the brush between my fingers. Suck some paint out. And another one there. And we'll have one there as well, I think.
But as I said, even if it's totally dry, you can still go back in and do that. In fact, unless you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> which I'm supposed to know what I'm doing, uh, it's probably easier to go back in and take it out once it's dry because it's not going to bleed in straight away. Once you've taken it out, it's bleeding back in because it's still sopping wet. When it's dry, it won't bleed back in. Sucking up again at the bottom. Take some out on that one. And I'll take some out there on the top, just with the corner of the brush look. And now, obviously, because this is watercolour, and so I can't paint the distance yet, because otherwise it will just bleed up into the sky. Um, all I'm going to do now is give that a couple of minutes just to dry. And then what I've done, what I'll do, once it's dried, I'll take out a few more bits and show you what I'm talking about. You can do it when it's still dry. Now, yeah, I'm just going to leave that. Now, this is totally dry now. It's totally dry. Only took a couple of minutes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Hmm? Wait till the siren's gone. Oh, it's an ambulance. Um, what, I'm going to, what I was talking about is taking stuff out even when it's totally dry. Like I say, it's now totally dry. Wash the brush out. Squeeze out. And we'll do one here. There. Look, go back in. Dampen it slightly. And you can see it coming out now. Wash my brush out again. Squeeze out again. Go back in. There. See? But this time, because it's dry, it's staying put. It's not bleeding in. Like it was when I, when I was taking it out. It was still wet. The text mark there as well, look. Gail, I know you've got to get in close, but leave room for my brush. They like close-ups. I know they like close-ups, but I've got to be able to paint it. Your audience. So that's me wrong again, is mm -hmm. it? Okay, take a bit out there as well. Look, see it coming out? No, because I can't get close-up. What I'm going to do now is paint that distance up and I'm changing to my number eight round brush and I've got cobalt blue again. This time a tiny touch of burnt sienna into the cobalt blue there. Oops. Mm -hmm. there we go. Plenty of water into it and all I'm doing is tapping in there. Get those distant trees in first. carefully around my tree although even if I go into it I can still take it out again as I've just shown you a little bit more water into that I think that's better yeah. I'm coming around here as well then the bottom of that and I'm just dropping in going up to my pencil line easy peasy and now this lot bit taller bit bigger bit stronger in colour because they're slightly nearer so again Cobalt blue, tiny touch of burnt sienna. A little more water. And actually, what I'm going to do with that is use the side of my round brush up. Tap on. And 
And now, with the sharp tip of the round brush, a few bits down look. Just dragging down with the tip of the brush. Still with the tip of the brush, tap on there. And with that being darker there, it now comes, this lot now comes in front of that lot. All makes sense, does that make sense, Kath? Makes perfect sense. Good. First time you said that to me. <laughs> Did I make perfect sense? And a few more sticky bits coming down there. Sticky bits, doesn't mean they're sticky, it means they're sticks. <laughs> And again, tap on with the side of the brush. So I'm not leaving big clumps of white showing through. And down to there, down to the top of the hedge. Now, I just want some really weak cobalt blue. Just just the blue, loads of water. Really weak, that. And just bring that across there. And that's the ground underneath the trees. Slightly stronger as it gets slightly nearer. A little bit less water into it. And there, that's the distance done. It's as easy as that. What we're going to do now is a few big trees. <laughs> now, this is not quite dry. It's still a bit damp at the bottom there, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go into that, the, the, the furthest away of the biggest trees. I'm starting off with a little bit of raw umber. And I've changed my rigger brush, by the way. Raw umber. So, raw umber again, lovely brown, and the only brown I carry in watercolours, and the acrylics actually. So I've got my raw umber as a nice standalone brown, put a touch of blue into that, and I've got a sepia, put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix, and I've got Van Dyke brown. Take my raw umber and burnt sienna together, just the two, and I've got burnt umber. So I've got four different browns from one tube, and I'm putting a light pinhead of blue into that to darken it slightly there and with my rigger brush look all I'm doing coming down here leave a few bits of white a few bits here like so big bows And a few bits here. And all I'm doing is following my pencil marks. Once you've got a drawing done, the easy bit is the painting bit because you're just following your own pencil mark. It's a bit like painting by numbers but without numbers. Does that make sense, Gail? Mm -hmm. Once again, perfectly. Uh -huh. Now, as I said earlier when I was doing the drawing, start the invent twigs. You don't need to draw them all, just paint them. And a bit more brown. You notice how much these brushes carry, by the way, how much they hold. Even though this rigger brush is a very fine brush. I did all of that with one dip. And remembering to leave plenty of white bits here and there. Don't have them all regimented, all white in the big blocks and the same bits in the same area. But just have plenty. Inventing some more twigs now. And a bit more paint there. Some twigs coming out because as I put these on here now, having this stuff on there knocks that stuff further back. 
Now, a little bit of burnt sienna. Sounds a strange thing to say, to warm it up, even though it's a snow scene. But, you know, just adds a little bit of life here and there. Just a few touches. Now, to make a black, which is just cobalt blue and burnt sienna. I was talking to you then, rather than talking to the camera. <laughs> Who are you talking to now? So, I'm talking to the camera now. Okay. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Almost equal, well, just about equal quantities. And that will give you a black. Just like in... in... <laughs> I did it again then, didn't I? <laughs> just like in ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Equal quantities. That will give you a black. It will be a slightly... Um, not a strong black weaker black with the cobalt blue than with the ultramarine blue but you're still getting black you bits here look see nice and strong and behind those closest to the main tree trunk well, there's going to be the most shadow, really. A few bits in here. And a few bits coming out from the other side. Isn't that a simple look? Trust me, an artist it is simple. And now some more bits at the top here. But again, leaving bits of white. Just keep in mind all the time that it is a snow scene, so you do need to leave some white. Because I hate white paint and watercolors. Just not natural. Nothing finer than the white of the paper. Even though, if you remember, this was blue. I took it out because I painted the sky through it. Now again, back to my number eight round brush. And with that black mix, all I'm doing with the side of the brush, a damp brush, load the brush like that, look. Get rid of any surplus. And just... Have a few bits here and there. Easy, isn't it? A bit so rough. And there, that's my first tree done. Easy peasy. Now, I'm going to do the hedge on that side as well. First of all, a little bit of yellow ochre with my round brush again. And break around. A little bit of yellow ochre, just a few touches here and there. Now, cobalt blue again. Plenty of water into that. Put cobalt in there. Ooh. That's better. And let it bleed in. Little bits of yellow that I put on. Now, a bit more water. And just moving it around. Like so. Tap on. And notice, look on the top, leaving bits of white. And take that off into the distance, like so. There. And disappears there. Now at the base of that, again, a little bit of that black mix. Put a lot of water into it. So there's just a little bit of that yellow ochre showing through here and there. Don't want too much of it. And 
And again, now I've got that black in there. That really highlights those few bits of white that I've got left on the top. There. Now it's time for the big tree. Now, again, it's in with the black mix. Cobalt blue and a lot of birds here. Into there. And I'm using my round brush for this one. But first of all, before I start, look, I'm going to split my brush in there. Split the round brush. I'm not going to hurt that. This one's six years old. It's had that kind of treatment all its life. Still cling on that. Again, keep the brush split. Rough edges there. Keep going in and splitting it. Few bits down here and up there. Few bits down there as well. Now a lot more water into it and just the blue, cobalt blue. Split the brush. And stippling. Now for a little bit of raw umber with a touch of cobalt blue into it. That's the mix that I use for that one, remember? A few bits here now. And leaving a few white bits again. It's all a bit dotty and splodgy at the minute, but it won't be. Cobalt blue and brown again. Make it a little bit stronger though. Now, let's start and get some of these top bows in. Look, by the way, that's the brush I've just knocked hell out of. And now, it gives me a lovely fine point. Aquafine brushes, they're fabulous. I use them all the time, both for watercolours and acrylics. And they never let me down. I can really punish them. And then as soon as I go back into the water, they go back to shape. Now back with the blue and bad sienna. Go to my rigger brush for the really fine bits in a minute. I'm just filling in as much as I can with the bigger brush first. Now to my rigger brush, and again it's with the blue and burnt sienna mix. bringing it upwards because if you press on with the rigger brush, I'll just show you here, if you press on with the rigger brush, you get a broader stroke. See? Then come up, lift off, and I'm getting a finer stroke. See? Rigger brush, that's such a useful little brush. Now some chunkier twigs coming down. I 
I've got a bump of water there. I'll get rid of that in a minute. Strengthening the mix now for the black. Still with my rigger brush. Any questions, Gareth? <laughs> You're keeping remarkably quiet. Enjoy it while it lasts. Oh. Gail's had a cold for the past week. Even the dogs have been scared to speak. Looking like a snowy tree, girl. It is. That's fortunate, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And just more of the same, really. Just twig upon twig. But remember how I put those side strokes with the brush there. I'm going to do the same up here as well, but with different colours, more colours as well. I'll just let that settle for a few minutes. Like I said, like I did with that one, I'm just going to put some different colours in here. I'm starting off with burnt sienna, but with the side of my brush, side of the round brush. And again, look, put the side of the round brush on. Paint up onto the tape. Don't want too many of them, just a few. But it's just that these trees here are still hanging on to their autumn, autumnal leaves. Well, they were yesterday, day before yesterday, anyway. Now, ultramarine blue, sorry, cobalt blue and burnt sienna. I'm so used to saying old green blue. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Plenty of work into that. But still with the sign of the round brush here. Going underneath some of those up. It's coming down here on the side of the tree. Hardly any water into that. It's now running out of water. I'm still doing dry brush stroke. I'll leave that now. Of course now, I want to start on in this distant bit and these bushy bits here. And again, it's much more like the same colour. First of all, well mainly, uh, first of all though, just like I did on the hedge here, a few touches of yellow ochre with the split brush look. Maybe it's in here and in here. Now burnt sienna. Again with the split brush. Now the blue and burnt sienna mix again. Yeah. 
again. Split the brush. And again, just stippling. Now, a little bit of raw umber. And again, splitting the brush. Now, like I said about needing to darken that, as you can see, I'm losing the tree trunk there next to that. Easily rescue. Don't get into being bogged down by thinking that it's watercolour and I've made a mistake so I can't rectify it. You can go in with a darker mix in this case and just darken that. itself and all that now as well. That's better. Whilst all that's still sopping wet, I'm just going to go back in with my rigger brush for a few minutes. A little bit of raw umber and blue, cobalt blue. And we'll have some twiggy bits coming out of that as well. Drawing upwards, rough growth coming out of the hedge there. That'll do for that. Now, bridge brush, a little bit of cobalt blue, and just water. Some of that coming out of here. into it and stipple upwards with the corner of the three quarter inch brush. And before I can do either side I want to get the path in. So I'll have a little bit of raw umber very lightly stroking over that. burnt sienna in there as well. That was part of the plan, obviously. Remember, leaving some white white paper showing through as well. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that bit of burnt sienna that I dropped in there. It warmed it up slightly there. It's a happy accident. It's, yeah, don't say that, that's Bob Ross. No. Mm. <laughs> that's the one. And now I need to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then I can do either side of the path as well. Now the path is dry enough, or the path is dry enough, so it's in with the snow either side. And this is basically, well mainly, um, just different strengths of blue, cobalt blue. Coming down here. I'm doing all of this with my three quarter inch flat brush. Once I've put it on like that, move it around a little bit. Uh, 
very simply just moving around, but remembering to leave some white as well. Edge of the brush, corner of the brush, sorry. And again, just have to put it on, move it up, just with water. I have a big shadow coming in there. During the COVID lockdowns, Gail and I did a, a, a an acrylic painting just further up this lake, of the woods down there. Do you remember that, Gail? I do. It was very, very hot. It was baking hot. Went from one extreme to the other, from baking hot to yeah. cold. What I'm doing now, moving paint around with a clean damp brush. Look, soften, taken out here and there. Just keep washing out that brush and squeezing out. Now, over here to the other side. Again, just the cobalt glue. Did we take the dogs up there with us? No, it's too hot. I remember when I finished painting that day when it was really hot, further down the lane, it was like a beetroot. <laughs> of course, me being a ginger, of course, I burned. A few edges there. Like so. Do we think we need the dogs in this one again? Yeah? Would be nice. Would be nice, yeah. So I'm not going to put the dogs in. <laughs> <laughs> well, a few bits of blue down here as well, in the part. Like so. And a few little bits of blue underneath some of the white areas that I've left highlights the white. And a little bit there. There's a path. Path disappears into the distance there. Okay, we'll have the dogs. And I'm drawing them, obviously. So I'm going to make a black, because of course they are black Labradors. Mr. Franklin Burt. When you look, we'll have one dog where? There? Yep. Yeah, about that. No round brush. There's this rectangle there. Then a smaller one in set there. And a couple of sticks coming down. I think that one's bird, aren't you? Mm, definitely bird. That one's slightly shorter. For Frank. That one's definitely Frank. Isn't it? Yeah. You can tell the way he's walking that he's grumpy. <laughs> And that's the baby's in. Now, put some shadow in this lot. Again, I'm going with the nearly black, but just slightly more blue into it. Touch that tree. Bring that down there like so. And then take it across. Now broaden that stroke. And bring some bits out. And then 
take it up here. Big long shadow. There's some bits coming down here now as well, from here. Obviously, a couple of bits of shadow from the dogs. A few bits there. Now, just a few little touches here and there in the path. see a finished picture and there we go a very simple snow scene done more or less on location or should I say from a photograph of the location which is where I was a couple of days ago and probably where I will be in about half an hour from now as well um, the paper I'm using as usual the Langton rough and we've got them in two sizes small one and a3 beautiful paper and it's never going to mess you about. You can use both sides of it to paint on. One side, one side is slightly smoother than the other side. But Langton Rough. It's only a £140 weight. And you can give it as much hammer as you want. And it's not going to mess you about. Um, and you can see, once I've taken the tape off, despite the amount of water that I put on there, it's dried out totally flat. So you never need to worry about it. And... There's loads of watercolour watercolor books out that I've got here, or in watercolour. Uh, the latest one is this one, Watercolour Rescue. Basically shows you how to rectify your mistakes when you make me watercolours. And very importantly, how not to make them in the first place. And this one here, which has been out for a few years now, Charles Evans Pocketbook, the two together just make a fabulous pair how to do them in the first place, how to rectify them if you make a mess, plus a bit of that as well in there, how not to do it in the first place. Uh, so the paints I've been using there, there we go, Aquafine paints. And as you can see, they're good, strong colors. You don't, you know, need to go to the expense of artist watercolor. If you can't afford it, because they're really expensive these days, £1.80 a tube, these on my website. Good strong colours, because they've got natural pigment in as well, even though it's a student's quality paint. Likewise, with the brushes, again, Aquafine. Four brushes. I've used them all today, haven't you? Have I used them all? Yep. One and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round, and a number four rear. And I use these for my acrylics as well as my watercolours. They are watercolour brushes, but they'll do both and they're good sturdy brushes. And this set, as I said earlier, is about six years old. So, fabulous things. Inexpensive. That one, that one's about four quid. The big three quarter inch flat. The number eight round, two pound fifty. Is it two pound fifty? They're about. Uh, same for the rear. They're really inexpensive brushes. So you don't need to spend a fortune on your kit to get good kit. And I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Have a look on the website, charlesenvart.com. If you're on Twitter, have a look at me on Twitter. Um, it's at charlesenvart because everything I do, I'm putting on Twitter as I'm doing it as well. Love to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.